Hello, my name is Mr. Aitchison. I am one of the principal teachers here at Lauren Primary School and I'm also the Primary One class teacher this session. Um, Meet the Teacher is different this session because of all of the guidelines that we have in place to keep us safe. So because of that, we're creating videos to let you know a little bit more about your child's class teacher and what we're getting up to in class. In this video, we're going to go on a tour of the classroom, which has changed significantly since um, we did our primary one induction video. And we're also going to share some information about how your child's learning, how you can support them at home and ways to keep in touch. Hope you enjoy. We're really lucky in primary one because we have a significant amount of space around the classroom and lots of places to play. As you walk into the classroom, you see our smart board and teacher's desk and plenty of space on the floor to gather and be together. We've just created lots of areas for playing and we plan our play for the children based on observations. Our fire station has been a huge hit for learners and they enjoy creating lots of different stories about emergencies and how to save people. We've recently opened a shop. This shop has come through observations of children trying to sell items in class. We hope to give them the chance to have some open-ended play around the scenario of a shop. We don't have many tables in Primary 1, um, but the tables that we do have are used for writing, for creating letters, for counting. Usually in the morning, our table here is set up for with shaving foam or pasta, giving the children a chance to mark make as they come in. Our other table is set up with whiteboards to give the children the chance to write new signs and new letters every day. In the middle, you'll see that we've got a whole range of resources for the children to use. They're all labelled with visuals so that we can see where things are and as Mr Richardson likes, to keep them tidy as well. Up the back of the classroom, we have our teaching table. This is where we deliver lessons during the day to small groups whilst the other children are out playing in the classroom. We've set up a theatre area in the class um, and we've been making Toy Story puppets. This is all to do with our Mad About topic um, in which we're focusing on the 2010s. Mad About stands for Music, Art, Dance and Drama. This is our way of de delivering drama and we're looking forward to seeing how the children play with this station. We have tough trays in class too. Tough trays are areas that are usually set up. This tough tray has been a pond it has been most recently a shiny tough tray with reflections, lights, using mirrors. And we've now set it up as a doll's house because the doll's house has become really interesting and really a point of focus for children's learning. As you can see, there's lots of spaces in the classroom for the children to play, but we also have displays too. This is our class charter. Our class charter is based on the UNCRC children's rights. As a class, we have a discussion about what we want and what rights we want to have. We've chosen the right to be safe, the right to be educated, and of course, the right to play. Really working on our school ethos in the past few years at Lorem, we have three school rules, to be ready, respectful, and safe. And you'll see that they're tied together with visuals that the children recognize. We talk about being ready for learning, we're respectful to each other and we make safe decisions. We've also been working on our school values. These are the four things that we hold important to us at Lorem. Diversity. We're a school of many different cultures. We're a school of many different people and we are all different. We recognise that we're all different. We recognise our differences and we celebrate our differences. There's so much that we can learn from each other about our lives and about our experiences. We believe in equality, that people are treated equally, that people have what they need to learn. Achievement's really important to us and we celebrate achievement in many ways, including Star of the Week, Star Writer and Magic Mathematician. Respect is our last school value, making sure that we show respect to each other, which ties in with our school rules too. Whilst we develop our ethos, we also have a school recognition board. Recognition boards are available in every classroom. As a class, we decide what our target is going to be. This week's target is good sitting. We peg up our target and every time we see somebody that is showing good sitting, their picture gets pegged onto the board. 
we really enjoy it when everybody gets on the board because we get to dance around to the song celebration. It's happened once in primary one so far and we're looking forward to it happening again. One of the most important things when starting literacy in primary one is ensuring that children can recognise their initial signs. And that's where we are learning at the moment in primary one. Hopefully you've seen YouTube videos that we've sent home letting you know what the sound is each day. A typical read write ink lesson starts with introducing the sound, for example, eh, and I take it in turns to say the sound and the children repeat it back. After we've done that, we look at what the sound looks like. We draw on the board for the children with a little cartoon to try and help them recognise the sound. So for example, when we have eh, on one side we have eh, and on the other side, we have an insect. After that, we look at pictures to do with the sounds. Again, you will be able to see a full video on the school YouTube channel for each of the sounds. As we introduce the sounds, we talk about things like insect, instrument, itchy, and invitation. Once we've explored the sounds, we then hide the sound in packs of other sounds. We say the sounds as they're shown to us. A, I, D, S, T, M. We then look and see if we can find it as quickly as we can. Once we've done that, we're introduced to Fred. Fred is a frog and Fred can only speak in sounds. Fred will tell the teacher a word, for example, S, I, T and we'll ask the children to repeat it back. We're looking to see if the children can say the initial sounds, sit, and if they can start to blend them together to say the word sit. A typical read write ink lesson then allows the children to go and play, whilst I take children over to the teaching table and we start to write out sounds using magnet letters. In terms of numeracy and mathematics, we spend a lot of time in primary one exploring numbers and focusing on numbers and number processes. However, we do ensure that we focus on all other aspects of numeracy and mathematics too. Things like 2D shapes and 3D objects, angles, time, including days of the week and months of the year. We gather together as a class and I show children images that look like this. In this style, we're having a number talk. I'd ask the children to show me with their thumbs if they can tell me what they can see, if they can find another way to say it, or any other ways. A child whose hand looks like this tells me that they've got four strategies to tell me what's on my picture. Now, children might say things like, I can see circles, I can see black dots, I can see a white page, and we encourage that discussion, it's extremely important. You might get children that say, I can see four and one. I might get children that can say, I can see five dots and I counted one, two, three, four, five. There might be children that say they can see three and two. There might be children that see three here and one and one. It's a fantastic way for showing the children ways that we can count and work together, but not everyone needs to get to the answer in the same way. We then build onto tens frames. A tens frame looks like this. It's made up of boxes and it's made up either five wise or pair wise. Now again I'm asking the children say what you see. So there might be children that can see two and two and two and already we're starting to count in pairs. There might be children that says one, two, three, four, five, six. They might say three and three. If they're going further on in their stages of development they might see this as 10 with 2 and 2 missing. 10 subtract 4, it makes 6. Again, we're letting the children have the opportunity to share their way of thinking and showing that we can get to the answer in many different ways, starting to build up those strategies. We use as many visual resources and practical resources during numeracy and mathematics as possible. One of the main resources that we use in primary one is Numicon. Numicon is also based on a tense stream, looking like this. So if you see in the shape, we've got two, four, six, eight, ten dots. Now, we've got a dot, uh, we've got a tile for every shape. So for example here, I'm holding five. We can ask the children to show me five, 
we can ask the children with this device what 10 subtract 5 is, how many more do I need to add to 5 to make 10. There's lots of open-ended things that we can do with Numicom, but this visual supports the children in seeing a representation of number. That way we don't assume that they just know the number in their own head. There are many ways that we can see the numbers that we're working with with the children. It's really helpful if you can start to promote with them at home different ways of seeing each individual number. Health and wellbeing is really important to us, particularly returning back to school after the COVID-19 closure. The City of Edinburgh Council have a programme called Building Resilience. Throughout Building Resilience, we follow the actions of a character called Skipper, and this is Skipper here. Skipper's journey is to navigate the river of life, and as Skipper does so, Skipper comes across a range of different challenges, often finding things overwhelming, tricky and challenging. As Skipper navigates the problems, Skipper builds up a range of strategies, and these strategies can help us to be resilient in tricky times. At the moment, our building resilience strategy is to take a moment, and that's something we're focusing on all the way through Lauren Primary School. As we take a moment, we're focusing on things that we like to do, things like breathing to calm down, things like colouring to help us take our mind off something that's challenging, or do something nice or pleasant to help ourselves. Every time that we move on to a new building resilience block, we send home a parents and carers information leaflet. That information leaflet is to help you to understand what's going on in class and there's often a task to do at home. If you're able to, it's good to read through the leaflet and try and carry out the task at home to complement the learning that's been done in school. It is extremely important to us that our children are looked after and that they're well during um, their return to school after the COVID-19 closure. Due to that, there's a lot of procedures in place that have been shared by Mrs Leach, our head teacher already via parent pay. However, we ensure that the children sanitise their hands as they enter the building. We ensure that our children wash their hands when they get to the classroom. The primary one class and the primary one staff stay together as a bubble, meaning that they are together all day and we don't mix between different classes. They have an allocated part of the playground that they go and play in together and they return back into school from that area. We have a day ranger and cleaner in school and to do extra cleaning during high contact times, meaning that they're able to wipe the banisters and clean the stairs and any other door handles and points of contact. We ensure that in class, if we see children that feel unwell, that we follow procedures and that those children are ensured that they're safe and that they're sent home safely. We do our best to make sure that there's no contact with other children. As I said, we ensure our best to make sure that our children are looked after during their return to school after the COVID-19 shutdown. We as a school understand that it's important to remain in communication with families and we do this in many ways. We send texts directly to mobiles, we send emails through parent pay regarding lunches and any other large pieces of information that need to be shared. We are contactable on the phone on 0131 5542308. We're also contactable um, via email and you can get the email address for the school on the school website which is www.laurenprimary.co.uk. Alongside that I am more than happy for parents and carers to try and contact me directly. You can contact me on my email address at mark.hison at lauren.edin.sch UK. I will try my best to respond to your emails as they come in. I can't promise that that will be as quick as you might hope, um, but I certainly will be aware of any emails coming in and I will do my best to get back to you. We're also extremely proud of our school Twitter account and you can follow us at Lauren School. You can also keep an eye out for us on Twitter using the hashtag, hashtag Lauren P1. We do try our best to tweet each day and we do try to give you a bit of information about what's going on in the classroom. Lunches are booked via parent pay and at the moment lunches are packed lunches provided by the school. 
Every child from primary one to primary three are entitled to a free school lunch. School lunches are provided to the classroom at 12 o'clock each day. Primary one learners come to school at five past nine in the morning. They come to the front door at Lorne Street. They have their break at 10.20 every day and they have their lunch at 10 past 12. Primary one learners leave school at five to three Monday to, Friday, eh, Monday to Thursday. The only day that this is different is on a Friday. On a Friday, primary one learners leave school at 12.15. We are really proud of everything that Laura and Primary One have achieved so far in settling into school. It's been a huge task for them to get used to coming back to potentially a different building and learning in somewhat of a different way. We know that they're going to have a brilliant year with us at Primary One and we look forward to continuing to work together with the children, with your families to ensure that they have the most fantastic Primary One year.